Hi everyone, it's Gail. I am in the midst of working on a nature journal and um, I'm going to do the centers of the signatures with Edith Holden pages. And so I thought I'd turn on my camera and just have a little craft with me and um, you can see what I'm going to do with these pages, hopefully. So, um, so the first one, I want to do kind of a little double, kind of a little double pocket. And I'm not sure, I've got a lot of Edith Holden pages here. Um, you know, Denise carries these at A Tattered Dream. And um, these ones are from a book that I had that is all apart. And as you can see, I have mostly mostly text and not a lot of pictures <laughs> but that's okay um so i'm not quite sure how i think i'll use this one because it has a picture on it i should cross stack these so i know which ones have which ones have just words and which ones actually have something on them so they're kind of not as big as i would like but They might work, or I might have to just, maybe what I'll do is add some paper on. How about we do that? Okay, this is where those ones that are just words are gonna come in handy. Um, so I need to think about how I'm gonna do this. You know what I think I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna just grab my sewing machine and sew those pieces of paper together. So, I got a look at my camera. Excuse me while I stand up and take a look and see if I am in camera. And I, I'm pretty good. So, okay. So, if I sew these together, then I might have a little closer to what I'm hoping for for length. And then I'll just cut it off. Okay, I don't know if you're following me, but that's okay. Well, I'll show you <laughs> what I'm thinking here in a minute. Okay, so I'm just gonna just gonna run a zigzag stitch. Okay. Voila, a bigger piece of paper. So, move my sewing machine again. Okay, so I'm going to clip off the strings of this. And now I can decide kind of how big I want this to be. And I kind of like the look of the I like the look of the stitching anyway. Maybe I want it to be, I want to get a little bit of those red berries in there. Okay, so how about we make it that big? I like that. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of hold this. I would normally use my paper cutter, but I don't have it over here, so we'll just... We'll just do it the old fashioned way by hand here. I'm just gonna cut that along. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab my sewing machine again. Make sure I'm in camera. Yeah, that's working great. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna sew down this side and this side and just kind of make a little pocket for a tag or something. Okay. Um, 
Well, I was wondering why my sewing machine was kind of jumping around. I had it sitting on my scissors. So that's, that's how this girl rolls. It's always an adventure. So, okay, and then I'm just gonna do this side. Oh my gosh something happened look at that messiness there can you see that ew yeah my um my string has been coming off my bobbin lately I don't know why it's doing that but you know here's a little bit of you know it never goes perfectly that's why they're handmade and they're they're junk journals and they're wonderful because they have the human element in them, right? So, okay, see if I can get my sewing machine to work properly here. Well, you know, these craft with me is I don't edit, I don't do anything. You get you get what's actually happening with this girl. And so you get the good, the bad, and the ugly, but hopefully. Hopefully there's some redeeming value in seeing that things don't go perfectly for everyone all the time. Let's see, did that, did that grab it? It's really hard to tell with the black because it's so dark down in there. Okay, well, that's not perfect, but it's okay. It's okay. It's, um, it's a nature journal, so let's just go organic with it. <laughs> okay, so then... What I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold this this way. Like that. And then let's see, I'll grab one of my signatures to show you. So this, um, this book, is, I'm using Edith Holden papers and I'm using um, Artie Mays's nature walks and uh nature's walk and then i have a bunch of mrs cogs the next project i'll show you so here was my thought see i want to put that right there in the middle of the signature and then we'll be able to just like put, tuck a little tag down in there so so actually that's it for that little double signature pocket that's all we're going to do, except that if I can grab it, excuse me, if I'm in the camera, I'm just going to grab my little um, punch and just going to get down there about halfway, give it a little punch so that, you know, it's easier to get your tags in and out. But yay, so there's one, there's one done. Then my other idea, yay, 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 that's fun. Um, my other idea is to, I wanna do an envelope. I'm trying to decide if I want um, just text or if I want a picture. Hmm. Okay, well, let's look through these really quick and see if we see a picture that speaks to us. And if not, um, I, the, my thought is also I want to put, I have, look at these, all of these Mrs. Cog's printables, all of her wonderful forest and flower and everything. I'm going to use those in the journal too. But the gal that I'm making the journal for loves owls. So thank you, Liz, for your owl printables. They are perfect. It's going to be hard to choose which one to put on, but we got to see the size of the envelope. And so I kind of think I just want text. Let's just use up some of these text pages. How about... That one's attached. I kind of like to keep these ones that are attached together. So here's one that's just by itself. Okay, so 
I think we'll go up this way. And I, I don't measure or anything. I just kind of eyeball it. So I think I'm going to go right about here. And right about here. And that's going to be our little envelope. Um, what I'm going to do, though, since I want it in the middle of the signature right here, I want this to stay open, of course. So I think what I'll do is sew around it, hopefully, if the machine works well, and if I have enough bobbin thread. We'll see. If we have to change in the middle, we have to change in the middle. But um, anyway, I'm going to sew around it, and then I'm going to put one of those owl pictures here is my thought so so here we go a little hint for you I don't know if you'll be able to see this very well but when you're doing a zigzag stitch and come to the corner if you go to the left, so I'm putting my needle into the left, when you turn it and come down this way, it's a nice clean corner. Whereas if, you're, if you stop at the other side, you kind of go over your stitching. Not a big deal either way. I definitely do it both ways at different times. So. Okay, there I am on the outside again. This, see, this is what I'm talking about. It's just a nice clean corner there. And um, all right. going to be like this and now I need to choose an owl to put on the front and so those are going to be a little too long I'm thinking these page these will be perfect or like this guy or that guy those will be too long so that helps helps narrow it down to two are you out there saying, pick this one, Gail, pick this one? Hmm. Gosh, Liz, I like them all. I don't know. I think I'm going to do this little guy because he's got a little tree. It's got a little green to it. So I'm just going to cut him out quick. And the sewing gods made sure I had enough bobbin thread for... The first part of this envelope. We'll see if we get through stitching on this little fella. Okay. Sorry if I'm doing that completely out of camera. Okay. So then I'm just going to put him, just going to put him in the middle. I'm just going to grab a tiny bit of Uhu glue. And I'm just going to just put a little bit in the middle just to keep him where I put him while I sew. And so kind of get him in the middle there. Oh, he's so adorable. Okay, so get the sewing machine back over here. And I'm in the camera. Okay, so now I'll start down here. Actually, I think I'll start here because, you know, I'm going to do a straight stitch on the bottom because 
just cause. <laughs> I'd love to give you a reason. I don't have one. <laughs> okay. Okay, and then I'm gonna zigzag up this side. I'm going to go back to straight stitch. And then zigzag back down. There we go. Okay. is is on the page so oh he's so cute I hope I hope my friend likes this that I'm making this for okay so now in this so in this one in the signature it'll be sewn in like this and then once I'm done sewing it in, I have a decision to make. I can either go ahead and glue it here and, you know, and make a pocket like uh, an envelope like that. Or I've been seeing um, Tracy Fox put, put paper on the inside to journal on. So I guess that's to be determined once I actually get them sewn in. If I do, I'm gonna put something right there for this to kind of tuck into, but I kind of like the idea of, of having writing space on the inside, maybe here and here. So I'm gonna post this way before the journal's done. So if you have an opinion on whether I should leave it open with coffee dyed paper for journaling or close it, please tell me in the comments. <laughs> that would be great. Lo would love to have your input. So anyway, there is there is the second little one, and there's three signatures in the journal. So the next thing I'm going to do, and I thought I would show you guys. Let me shut off my sewing machine and kind of shove it back a little farther. Um, I have a Stampin' Up envelope maker, and um, I know we are memory keepers makes them too, but. For those of you who haven't seen these, I mean, honestly, I use this all the time. And I would bet that most of my counterparts also do. So if you're a beginning journal maker, um, this is a good investment. Because, you know, you can use children's pages. You can use scrapbook paper. You can use just about anything. And um, and it's just, it's just really, it's so great for, for making... Um, for making envelopes. Sorry, I got distracted. I'm looking through. Ooh, look at that one. That's one. That's the one. I love that. Okay. Those those pages are not apart. I'm breaking my own rule here. I'm going to just tear them apart because that one's just perfect. Maybe give that a little fold. I could cut it with my scissors, but it still has the string from the binding in it. So I think... I think I'll be fine just giving it a rip here. Okay, so one thing to kind of figure out when you're making an envelope is what you got to work with in terms of inches. So this is seven inches wide. So the way, I don't know if I can hold this up to you so you can see, the way this works is it has your card size here, it has your paper size, and it has the score line. So I need to look at the paper size and make sure that I don't go over seven inches on, on the, you know, the size of my paper. I don't see one that's exactly seven inches. So I'm going to go ahead and go, maybe I'll just go 
six and a half. I'm just I'm looking down to see what see what my options are. A four by four envelope is six and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. Hmm. That might be good. I'm just gonna grab my um, paper cutter real quick and get this get this cut to size. Okay, so let's just do a four by four envelope and see how it turns out. Okay, so I'm gonna go six and seven eighths and six and seven eighths. I have so much stuff on this tiny table, you guys. I hope you can relate. <laughs> okay, six and seven eighths. That is hard to see. Okay, I think right about there. So I'm just honestly just taking a tiny skiff off of there. But then I think I want the bottom, all the all the pretty prints. So let's go to six and whew, boy, that's hard to see. Okay, got it. And the great thing is, look at that, I can use that somewhere. So that's awesome. Okay, so we have our six by seven eighths and six by seven eighths paper. Ugh, I'll set that over there. Okay, so um, the six and seven eighths, it tells me to score at three and a half. And so those numbers are up here on the top. And um, this is the score guide here. And this is where we're going to score. So uh, three and a half. So you have to remember what it said. <laughs> okay. So then you just kind of start and you make a score down the, the, the ridge here that um, allows you to score. Then you, all, you always turn to the left. And um, actually, before I do that, I'm going to tell you that, there we go, get it back. Um, this is a punch. So what I do is score and punch. And see, it just takes out that little bit and it makes it easier to fold. Then you line your score line you made up over here, you line that up with this score pointer and you score this side and punch and you just do that all the way around sometimes the score line's hard to see i have to kind of tilt that toward my lamp to see it but and one more and then this particular one, I don't know if they're all that way. I got to decide which way I want this to go. I think I'm going to have this be the top flap. So back here, there's a little corner punch type of thing that just rounds your corners on your envelope for you. Okay. And then, um, yeah, and then you have your... You have your little bits and pieces. I one time, you guys, made a artist trading card where I took these and I kind of mosaic them on this card up and down, up and down like this. I don't know how I had the patience because it was a little tedious, but I had all different colors from making a bunch of envelopes. And um, so they were all different colors. It was really cool. I digress from my current project, but anyway, little side story. So those are our round parts. So then you just, you fold in one side, fold in the other side, and then you fold up. And that makes your little four by four envelope. And here is, here is the flap. So isn't that cute? That's just a nice, that's a nice square one. Um, so let's see what that's going to look like in the signature. I just don't know. I'm not sure. I do have a bigger nature book that I could make an envelope and I could just use this somewhere else in the book. Am I going to like that? Okay, I got 
got to look at my other signatures and see if there's any that that makes me happy. It's not it's not thrilling me at this moment, I'm just going to say. Sometimes the best laid plans, right? I think it would be like that. Maybe my color choice wasn't the best. Let's see. Oh, I don't like it in any of them. So that's just going to be an extra envelope and we're going to get, I'm going to get the giant nature book. So hold on one second. That is if I can find the giant, giant nature book. Where are you? There you are. I don't know if you could hear me. I was mumbling, but <laughs> I couldn't find it. So look at how big this guy is. So he's going to make a bigger envelope. I think that's what's bugging me is the size of it. So that'll be fine for a pocket, that one that we just made. So, oh, that's just some, that's some extra wrapping paper. Um, yeah, so this is a Nature Atlas of America, this thing is called, and it's giant. Let's see what the, I think it's vintage, but... I'm also not seeing a copyright right off the bat, so hmm, I don't know. But it's got some, it's got, it's got naturey things in it. Birds and I used some pages of the birds. Oh, there's an owl. Okay. Ooh, and an owl on this page. Okay. This is the one we're gonna use. I hope I can get it out okay without my. I don't want to go grab my utility knife, but we got it, so that's awesome. Okay, do over. Let's try a different envelope because that one was just not making me happy. Okay, so now we got now we've got a lot of room. We've got nine inches to work with. Holy buckets! But it, as you could see, it was a pretty big journal. So I'm looking up here. Um, there's a nine and a quarter by nine and a quarter, which makes a seven, uh, four and a half by seven, um, four and a half by seven. Let's try that. Maybe it'll just, maybe it'll just make me happier to have a bigger one. Okay. So nine and a quarter, I said, didn't I? Thank you. Thank you for your input once again. <laughs> This is so weird just talking to myself and you guys are with me. <laughs> okay, nine and a quarter. So I have a marking on my on my um, little paper cutter here for nine because of doing traveler's notebooks. Ooh. Okay, nine and a quarter is pushing it. But I think it might be okay. Okay, so, and then I for sure want both owls, and one's on the top and one's on the bottom. So, okay, so let's cut off the top first and see where that gets us to. Just kind of go to the top of the picture and the writing. I don't know if I'll use that, but we'll keep it just in case. Okay, nine, 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 and a quarter. Right there. Okay. Okay, I think that's going to be okay. Might cut off his tootsies. No, he was up on, he was up on a roof. We're okay. Okay, so that's nine and a quarter and nine and a quarter. Okay, so then let us see how that works. This is going to be interesting because, oh, I guess it still does go right on the board, but, hmm. So, let's see, what, what was it? It was three and three quarters is where we go to up here on our little score. Okay, I'm trying to, trying to think this through. One or the other is going to be on the inside. This guy, as, as it stands, probably would be on the inside. And this guy would be on the flap. 
Okay, we're going to just go for it, and we might just add on here one of Mrs. Cog's owls. That's what we might do. Yeah, it's nine and four. Okay, three and three quarters. Let's do this thing. Boy, this is thick, too. This is interesting. Okay, I can go up this way. Sometimes starting on the bottom is is helpful. I don't know. Okay. Let's see what we're going to get here. I'm not sure. It's an experiment. Oh, yeah. So that's going to be kind of the tiny. You know, worst case scenario, I have another envelope. If I don't use it in this journal, I'll use it in another one. But I think I'm gonna like this. I wish I could get both owls, but that makes sense. That one will be on the inside and one will be on the outside. Okay. So I think I want my owl to be on the flap, so I'm gonna punch these sides. Okay, let's see what we got. What we got. It's just so those fold in and in. So the screech owl ends up kind of being on the side, but that's okay. You can still kind of see. And then, then there he is on the flap. But what if I put one of Mrs. Cobb's? Look how fragile that paper is too. I think we're going to have to washi tape that because I'm going to grab some because um, otherwise I'm afraid it's going to come undone when it goes into the um, into the signature. So that's okay. Everything everything has a fix. <laughs> so the good thing about this is it's really it's wide. So this guy could go on it, couldn't it? I like him. I like seeing his face. Yep, I think he's the yeah, I think he's the guy. He's speaking to me. Shanna, I don't know if you're watching, but I'm working on your journal, friend. So you're seeing it in progress or in process. One or the other. I'm making progress by being in process. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I do, I do entertain myself. <laughs> okay, that's gonna be, that's gonna be kind of cool, but he's kind of getting lost. So I kind of think I've got some, I think I've got some cardstock up here. Oh my goodness, you guys, if you could see this, it is a disaster up here. I was making, um, Franken paper for this journal and so it's a little bit of a disaster yeah I'm gonna like that better okay where's the handy dandy handy dandy cutter here um, let's go this way yeah that's good more pieces for Franken paper. I loved how the outsides of the signatures in my last nature journal were made from Franken paper and I loved it. So I'm kind of incorporating that in this one too. Close your ears, Shanna, if you don't, if you want to be surprised. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to be good. Don't you think? I like it. I think and then the washi tape's even going to add another little another little bit to it. So, I think I'll I think I'll sew it on. So, I'm just going to put a little in the middle. In the middle here, I'll just get that somewhat centered. And then 
I'm probably pushing it with my bobbin, but we'll see if I can if I can get it sewn. Okay, and then let's especially especially this bottom. I really want to reinforce that because I do not want it to fall apart or fall out of the signature or whatever it would do if it didn't if it didn't stick. So, I always and you guys have seen me do this before. I always put my washi tape through the Uhu glue if it's going in a journal because washi tape in and of itself is not that sticky. So I'm gonna try to mm -hmm, yeah. Put it there. And flip it up and put it there. Oh yeah, that's gonna be good and strong. That's awesome. Okay, I'm just going to trim it slightly. It's overhanging a bit. Not that I'm a perfectionist, but kind of. <laughs> okay, okay, I like that. I'm going to do it on the top too because I think it also gives it a little more color, which is kind of nice. Okay. Alrighty. Ooh, got a little one of the little cutoffs there stuck into it. Okay. All right. I'll just put this up here. And flip it over. My owl's just barely peeking out there, but he is peeking out. I think I'm going to trim that around the flap a little bit. It's just kind of, since the flap is a little bit, isn't straight really, it's kind of curved. There we go. Okay, awesome. All right, then I'm going to slightly pick up my mess so I can sew this guy. Let's look at it. Let's look at it in the um, signature and see. Make sure we're happy. Okay. We'll try this. Let's grab this one. Okay. So it will be in the signature. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. See that was it. That other one was just too small. So yeah. Sometimes the perspective or the is just, you know, is just off. And this makes me much happier. And this one, I, okay, see, as you go, you make the decision. So I think I'm going to go ahead and glue this one. It'll be easy in and out there. And it says barn owl right there. Isn't that perfect? And then the other one that we did, I'm going to put the coffee dyed paper on. So there we go. Okay get Mr. Sewing Machine back over here. Maybe there's enough thread on my bobbin to go around this little guy because I would love for you to see the finished pro pro product. I was, <laughs> was going to say project. I was going to say product. Oh my good grief. It's one of those days. Such a good crafting day though you guys because it's cold here and snowy. We're supposed to get a really big storm, like they're saying, don't go anywhere. So, my husband and I got groceries this morning. And we're just going to stay in and stay warm and... I think he's taking a nap. While I'm doing this, life is good. Oh, you guys, this is going to be so cute. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. All right. 
sewing machine goes back over here. Okay, so we'll trim these off. And, and yeah, so that is what it's going to look like once it is in the signature. Woohoo! So all I have to do is put the journal paper um, on the inside of this guy. And I'll be so happy. I'm not sure that I'm looking to see all my journal paper that I have handy is too too small. So I'll have to I'll have to grab some. Gosh, this is a long video anyway. Hang on, guys. I'm just gonna grab some some coffee guy paper, and it's on the other side of my room, of course. Oh, I need to have another coffee dyeing session. I am getting low. It gives me anxiety when I get too low on, on coffee dyed paper. Oh, you guys, I absolutely love this one. That's fun. That's going in that signature, I think. So, this guy. We're going to want to cut this off right about... Right about here. So let's do it. And I don't have a pencil with me. That's why I just nipped it like that. But normally, normally that one can go in the scrap bin. And that is how wide that is. So if I go, if I go about three and two eighths, how about that? Yep. And three and two eighths. Is that what this one is too? That's going to be a little bit too much. Let's just go three on this guy for the other flap. Okay. This one goes there. And this one goes here. Decide which side of the coffee die I like better. And I'm kind of feeling like, you know what, you guys? Did I bring over? No, of course I didn't. So I just have to stand up to grab it. But the, I feel like the edge is fading into the envelope. So let's just give it a little brush. What would we do without distress ink? Honest to Pete, I don't know. Because I don't know. I, it's, it's the thing that's front and foremost on my desk. I don't know about yours, but I mean, I use it constantly. Yeah, see, I like that better. It's not, it's not blending in as much. Isn't this fun watching me distress the edge of this paper? <laughs> I so appreciate you guys coming crafting with me. And I, I should say while I'm doing this, thank you so much for all of your nice comments and your encouraging me to do more videos like this because this is this is just really a lot of fun to me so um okay so we vintage photoed that up and okay let's just let's just glue them in let's just do it and then um yeah and then they'll just only have to be sewn in and that makes me so happy because that's a that's a good stroke of business getting this journal on its way to completion. <clears throat> okay, so I want to be above the sewing and below the sewing. And that kind of leaves one little sentence cup on each side. Yeah, like that. 
That's going to be fun. Now, what do you think about closing it? Um, I'm trying to think if I have something handy to use as the closure. Oh yeah, I like that. Do you, I think that'll be great. And then it'll be sewn in right here. And that'll just open up for a couple of, a day here and a day there of journaling or something. Okay, so don't you think we need Tim Holtz? I think we do. I think what I'd like to do is just to make a little closure out of this one of the Tim Holtz botanicals. So have my handy dandy little case here and we'll find something fun. So that and then the owl's on that side. Gosh, he's so cute. He needs a little he needs a little something too. Would have been easier to do this with him not on the page, but you know it's still doable. Yeah, that makes me happier. He stands out a little bit more. Okie dokie. So what do we have from the Tim Holtz Botanicals? That would be a, be a good little closure. Of course, there's butterflies. Always there's butterflies. It's this little bird. Might not be too bad. Why are butterflies always my go-to? They always are, though. I like that. So let's just... I'm gonna... I always distress ink around the edges of these, too, because it's such a stark white. They're, you know, the die-cut part of it is just stark white. And... I like stark white sometimes, but not in this case. So... So what we're going to do is just put some glue on his bottom half. And stick him down right in the middle. Okay, so there's our little envelope. Got its little, its little closure. So we just need that to dry and then that can go in, you know what, one of these, this one, has butterflies. So let's do that. That's going to be in the middle of that signature. Okay, so that signature has that. We have the one that I'm in love with that I keep showing you. <laughs> and then, oh my gosh, I can hardly reach this one. Okay, and then this one, this one, that actually works perfect because this is really, this is really colorful and that brightens that page up a little bit. So there you have it. There are the three um, signature centers of my next journal. I hope you enjoyed crafting with me. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for all your kind comments, everyone. I appreciate you so much. We'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.